the referee. In fact, should we just show that for a sec? I, I'm just going to show off some work from our resident Gat. Hang on. So I'm going to cut to the draft. It's not the draft just yet, but what you see on screen, guys, so a bit of behind the scenes content because people get wet about it for some reason. This is what the referee sees. So it sees all the who's they say who's flying what, what range they go at, and what happened to the ship. So we track all that good stuff, who's flown what ship, if they died, if they boundaried, and all that jazz. So this is this is where all the magic happens. Lucas is Lucas has got very intimate with this screen. Oh, um, I love this one. Yeah. So all right, let me let me get what we came up to see. Oh my god. Not I mean again. you guys are not memeing again. you guys are memeing about the analyst analyst analytics of that match. If if you can if you think you've got more for us that we didn't say, type it in chat. We're we're keen. I'm I'm keen to hear some backseat analysis, I really am. I did see a lot of remote DCCM going from the uh, commander's choice on the Kronos though, so I don't yeah, think it was they, ever actually I, jammed. I think um Zero Talent had uh, info links, so I think it made absolutely no yeah. difference. I think the problem I had there, they had Ishtar, Vagabond, and then Vindicator. It just wasn't going to work. You have a reasonably fast hack comp against two battleships, and then you brought a very heavy, slow battleship. Yeah. It, it wasn't going to work. And like I said, no links, no logi, they had no way of doing it. In fact, they also brought the Gryphon. They just waved a flag saying, we're bringing ECM, we're bringing ECM, and then he brought ECM on the Ishtar as well. Having letting let, let the enemy know already that you're bringing ECM, they, I think, just outplayed themselves at every level in draft. That's certainly like I, I'm obviously not very experienced in these things, but certainly not something that I would think of when putting together a draft about how overtly I'm advertising what Ewar I'm flying. That's an interesting uh, aspect to it. And I'm loving Zero Talent again already. Like, oh my god, another Kronos! Yeah. Yes, you have to. There's two things you have in this format. You've got telegraphing and you've got cheesing. If you take an exec first pick, guess they're going armor then, boys. You know, mm -hmm. if if you if you take an Ishtar, oof, anybody's game. You know, even picking a yeah, Punisher. Yeah, that's what we're trying first, to do at the start. You know? Yeah, the, the first two picks are always you know trying to not give away what you're doing, but at the same yeah. time set yourself up for it. Flex picks. You know, generally like th this is the other myth. And this is what separates the good teams from the not so good teams is that people come into this and they say we want to run this comp, and it's like that doesn't work. Like, I don't know, 70% of the time, if you come into this saying, we want to run this comp, unless you've got some huge brain play that you can do with the early bands, you, you, ha you have to be at least moderately reactive to what gets picked and banned. Because if they ban three of your core ships, then you're not going to be able to run it. So then what? You know, you, this is what separates TQ, you know. <laughs> and I mean, not just the bans, but also in the fitting stage. Like, yeah, if you absolutely. go back to the previous draft, when you see that the team that Jose brought into the Vindy, well, then pivot. Do a rail Vindy. You have mm. full range control. There's nothing that can tackle you. You can yep. kill the small stuff and just kite away. I do have a question about the Crucifier, because the last time I was involved in the tournament scene here, mm -hmm. which was about two weeks ago, Crucifier was basically a 100% ban. And I've noticed these last couple of matches, it's all been battleship bands and there's because, no crucifier. Because, because people have cottoned on that any kind of paper thin frigate. Right, I'll tell you exactly what. You saw what happened to that Griffin? Mm hmm. Same deal. Fair enough. Yeah. Like, it, literally, it. Yeah, yeah I, it takes a lot of work to what, keep a frigate alive. Yeah. Like, like, unless, like, if you try and tinker it, like, oh, just tinker, then drones can't kill it. Yes, but everything else shooting it can because it now can no longer kite it. It's a tech one frigate, you know. So that the, they can be good if they can be kept alive. You know, if the enemy team goes with like some minimal drone spam with things that can't catch it or project to it, yeah, they're viable. But when you're against a team that you know can drop what was in that case 40 light drones and you've got no logi or links, it's you know anything that's not moderately tanked and bigger than a frigate's dead. So and also exactly what Mira said as well. You're bringing drones and blaster ships. The crucifier is not going to do dick. Yeah, Chris. And it was on both sides yeah. too. Yeah, and we've seen yeah, that a lot. In as that well. scenario, yeah, that's fair. In yeah. in that particular draft, it depends. Like if you're versing this Raven Raven Navy, actually bringing Chris Fire will work because you just sit at range and just try and just just go out and shop the shit out of them if they're firing crews. Yeah, but then they pick Jack or Flag yeah. Catcher, so yeah, it suddenly Jack, it doesn't Jack work, and they had a worm yeah. as well. So yeah. how many drones did yeah, I say? Not Th exactly thirty five. The purpose. Yeah, I mean, you said like forty, but whatever. Well, it was I think close I, to it's it's thirty it's thirty five. Whatever, Stork can't take drones. Well, it's twenty five. Yeah. I don't care. Look, more than one, all right, is enough yes. to do the more job. Than one, two, yeah. man. It's fine. We all knew what you meant. It's okay. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. For some reason, I did. Uh, I, yeah, I just really bollocks the maths on that. I've just realised what Brent said. Like, even I saw him put five v five equals forty, and I was like, yeah, I know. And I looked at it again. I was like, oh no, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> um. So we'll, we'll talk about it now. We'll, we'll go back to the draft in a sec because I want to try and keep the draft well, talk. Talking about right. the crucifier. Yeah, oh, yeah, and they pick the a crucifier. crucifier. They've oh. been listening. All right, let's have a look at the draft. Okay, picks. Kronos, TFI, Mega. Seen this comp from, seen a similar comp from Zero Talent before. Raven, Navy, Raven, Jackdaw, Flycatcher, Worm. I mean... What are they missing again? Can somebody tell me why? I'll give chat one guess. Exactly. Exactly that. What, what, what Well Fed just put in chat? Blue. Blue jams. Don't even need to like mix up your mids. Like each of the fucking blue team ships can fit one cheese jam, and they've pretty much won that match. All of the red team ships are blue. They're all Caldari, for use of a better term. Do you know what I mean? Right. I don't know why you. One more thing as well. What did lock. red not bring again? Links again. No links. You're bringing what's probably going to be like a semi tankery sort of tankery sort of fit with a Raven Navy and Raven, right? Where's uh, your fucking links? And if I just, I'm just running something on Excel. Just give me a sec. So yeah, so this is the first time, two consecutive matches, be it league matches or opens, that we've seen the Gila not be picked or banned. Sorry, it wasn't banned and it wasn't picked. We've never had two consecutive games where it's not appeared on the draft. Do, 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 do. So yeah. yeah, it's weird. I think, like, we're kind of seeing like the twin battleship core is getting more and more prevalent, and you can't really mix the Gila with that. It's really tight. I still don't get the flycatcher pit. I, I don't. I don't get the. Uh... No, I agree with you. When you've got a worm and a jackdaw, why do you need a third anti-tackle? Yeah. Especially when you could have picked the pontifex instead. You have one yeah. pontifex. Yeah, or a, no, or a sorry, it's, it's, no, no, sorry, that's yeah. two points. No, yeah. Oh. Wait, but what did they end up with there, points-wise? So it's a T3D, um, which is a point number I cannot remember. Which is what? Thirteen points, and then the interdictors ten. So they had twenty-two what they points. Done? What they could have done easily is switch out the jackdaw for the flycatcher and then maybe get their commander square thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly that. I don't get bringing both. Like, one or the other? Yeah, sure, I could see that. But the fact you've now gone again without links, to be fair, they did ban out most of them, but it's any good, link both. I'll tell you what, hang on. It's a good shout in chat, though. What are your thoughts on this? So, this is from Tehebil from Tuskers. Uh, it means the crucifier has to spread his TDs. But the thing is, that's the problem right there. I mean, let me just double check. That's an all missile comp. So he can flit, flit, fit full guidance disruptors. He hasn't got to worry about fitting tracking disruptors. If he has to fit one TD, one GD, then uh, you know it's going to fuck them over. Because... And honestly, it's not really going to matter about having him having spread his uh, GDs because they're just going to delete the jackdaw or the flycatcher and just suddenly it's going to be four ships. Then delete one more, three ships. It's not going to make much of a difference. Well, they're going to die too fast. How? The drones. Drones and Tempest. Tempest can actually hit pretty hard if it transversal matches. Uh, but you've got a worm, a jackdaw, and a flycatcher to kill. You know. Yeah, worms, drones. It's you don't really yeah, care but, about the missiles. Yeah, too but much. each each. My point is this: that do, you've got three frigates there capable of hazing that tackle. Now, based on what I've seen from Zero Talent, I don't think that's going to happen, and and I don't want to give away. I don't want to give away what I know about the comp they're using, because I've seen them use this, it follows a similar setup, so I'm not going to give it away in case people are like, oh, give away the strategy, but I don't see any of those frigates dying on Zero Talent. Headshot battleships again, yeah. Mm. But... I think the Crucifier dies for the simple reason that Jackdaw has a, uh, I believe it has a resistance to guides. It definitely has a resistance to damps. I believe it has a resistance yeah. to guidance disruptors as well. Yeah, but you can't deal with all, this is, this is the point I'm making. There's a worm, a jackdaw, and a flycatcher. How do you deal with all three of those in one go? Because the jackdaw can project and it's not going to give a shit. You know, the the worm. I definitely agree with that for sure. It's put. I think that crucifier dies very quickly. And like we said before, if it if it tries to anchor up and tinker amongst those battleships, even if it doesn't, even if the ravens kite, I think that crucifier is dead unless unless they big brain it and go with an afterburner fit so it can sig tank the missiles. I don't know. Oh, they're most certainly going to AB fit it. Oh, yeah. That's what yeah, I think it's going to die no matter what you are, right? But at the same time, it's like, okay, but that jackdaw flycatcher and worm are going to do nothing when the real fight starts. Yeah. Which is going to be Tempest Fleet Kronos versus two Ravens. Yeah. And the thing is, if they do if they do AB fit it, and like Wellfed said in chat, if it goes 1NN, does that make it viable for a 400 mil plate fitting-wise? I've never fitted a Crucifier, but... You know, obviously, when I think you, you can do that, yeah. Yeah, yeah and that's yeah. a that's a thick little boy. Mm. So, 
I have ten men fit a Chris Fire before, so that'd be kind of funny. But you wouldn't do anything else, though. You'd just be ten men, and that's about it. This battleship matchup, though, I feel like I, I'm a really big fan of the Tempest Fleet issue. I just, I, it's a really solid ship. It's, it's the slot layout is basically the pre-nerf Macariel. So, just, uh, especially when it's getting remote reps in the front. I've, I've got to interrupt you. I'm so sorry, Lara Seco, but Casper Twenty Four is in chat. My co-host, my best friend. Okay. And he's voted red against zero talent. Ooh. I'd love to know his thought process. This is the point where he goes, oh shit, zero talent's blue. <laughs> I think. <laughs> so I'd love to know. Casper, let, if you're here, let me pick your brain, dude. What's going on? What's Why? Casper, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll get him. Get him. Oh, that reminds me. Stream points. So next weekend... I don't know how it looks, but thank you to the very kind, generous donation of um, Water Uber Snow and uh, Keelan Dark Light Knight. I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name. The guy from uh, a team that I can't remember. Is it Kellen or Keelan Dark Light? Uh, they've both been kind enough to um, de donate um, what is equated to, I don't know, about five or six different IGC winner skins, probably worth about a bill each, and 50 in-game t-shirts 50 for male 50 for female that we are going to give out to our viewers um on the saturday broadcast um and we're hoping that that giveaway pool increases so there's no gain for us isk wise it's just something for us to do on stream and break up the monotony so if you guys like free shit tune in on saturday and we'll be uh we'll be we'll be giving some stuff away that's it you guys can carry on with the in-depth analysis now of, of the crucify versus three anti-tackle ships yeah, I, a Chris Fire is kind of a weird one. I will say, not the biggest fan, but the Jackdaw flag actually should make zero sense from from any level. It's to the thing is, you'd think. Let me ask you this, right? And I'll, I'll see if I'll see if I trip anybody up. Do you think they pick the Jackdaw and Flycatcher so the Crucifier has to spread his GDs? No, because the Crucifier was picked after them. Oh, okay. Exactly. Somebody, somebody gets it straight away. All right, yeah. I tried. I tried. Okay. Um, but no, I agree. I don't. I don't know where that's coming from. I, my impression is like considering the two matches I've seen of this of this team ever are two linksless matches. Maybe whoever's making their comms is undervaluing links. Like doesn't really doesn't give them as much value as they actually have. That's the impression I'm getting here because mm. the, is it twenty percent bonus that they give to HP and to resist? It's not huge. not that much because they're not mind linked. Remember? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. But still, but in a five v format, eight. I think it's between eight and eleven percent, depending on what link it is. Yeah. Lucas um, might know ooh, properly. I like what Astro said. Actually. No, that, surgical strike that, as well. Uh, Flycatcher and Jackdaw have like three spare mids against Kronos TFI. Just put one jam on. One, yeah, true. max jams. They could though. You know, if that if the, the red team goes with full Galent cheese jams, I mean the TIEFI... Or, or even both, you know, you can jam that tie fire, that Kronos out. If it's RR, could be an easy clap on the frigates and maybe even the tie fire. I don't know. Red has yeah, a, worm, is man. a brick boat for sure, but it's not exactly good on reps. Mm. So they could try and like blap up the tier tie fire with the two ravens. That is a possibility. Oh, yeah, and red on. has a worm as well, the strongest CM boat in this tournament. Let me just see here. We got <laughs> we got Mira Kiev uh, in chat. Mira, if you want to hop on and come give us your two cents. I'd love to hear it. We'll get we'll get the the troll extraordinaire captain to come and talk some to talk some sense if he's not busy. We'll see. Let me know if he hops on TS. Just drag him down. This could be quite an exciting game, but I imagine some of the big brain captains are sat there going, "Nah, it's just going to be this easy, easy peasy. This will just happen, and that team wins." That's if the team. That's if both teams get their ranges and in time and don't gub themselves by the grip and having to go at zero. Wonder how much difference that actually made. Do you think it? Given given the range zero talent walked in at, I think that Griffin um, lived for a long time because that Griffin would have gone in at fifty. I think. Yeah, if the Griffin I, was at fifty, it wouldn't have died at the start of the match, but it wouldn't have done too much as well. It might have maybe saved the vindicator, like peel off the hype for a moment. Get the Vindicator away, then run away as fast as possible. Would it have even jammed the Kronos with the Recibos? Because that's what I would imagine the Griffin's role would be to get rid of the remote wraps. I mean, the way they played it, they were trying to kill the small stuff, right? So if they and the um, 
Vindicator got tackled by the hype. So he could have maybe quick jammed the hype off and then run away again and got the Vindy away from the hype again and then continued yeah. murdering support. I just, I really don't see a way that match could have. Yeah, I'm oh, we've already to discussed think, it. I still but think I even just... then they would have lost, but maybe pulling the Vindicator away so he survived for a bit longer. Maybe? But I don't maybe. know. Yeah, just... maybe, maybe. You can be jammed three cycles in a row, even with Recebos and local Cebos overheated. Very true. It's, uh, it's a lot rarer. <laughs> that, and that's an unfortunate level of experience to know that from. Yeah. Oh, and there's even me. Any time a Hornet EC is on me, I get jammed immediately. Doesn't matter what, what ship I'm in. Doesn't matter how many Cebos yeah, I'll fit. I'll we, get jammed by a single Hornet. We, ju we used to duel uh, Cebo up Algorns and then feed them Recebo, and they just essentially didn't really get jammed. I'm talking about in Wormhole Space in, on TQ at this point, and they essentially didn't really get jammed. So, But I'm talking over like a 30-minute fight here, so maybe I'm a little skewed. Mm -hmm. Don't have huge tournament experience myself. I mean, to be honest, if your Balgorn has never got jammed, what were you trying to be jammed by? Usually ECM Tengus. Mm, person who's trying to jam me has got shit skills. Should get, <laughs> I mean it, you should get jammed at least a couple of times. Like I'm sure they got a statist jammed statistically times through, you should 30 jamming. minutes, but it wasn't like, oh my god, I literally can't play EVE Online right now, like it often is when you're being ECM'd. Oh, but you can. You can. Like, this is why Smart Bomb's an FO. Like, just put, just put FOF launches on your Battle and you'll be fine. Yeah, okay. How many, how many missile slots does the Battle have again? About 350. Hmm. <laughs> I wish more ships had uh, off-meta hard points. It'd make for some interesting fits. Like the... I was just going to say, the Maldiction is one of my favorite ships, but it has turret slots, and you you have a little bit of a more interesting fitting choice. I kind of like auto cannons on the Maldiction, because they're good at killing drones. I wish a couple yeah, more ships had that And they don't of. take much fitting either, so you just like put a couple in there and start deleting drones. Yeah, maybe that's maybe that's just because of the low fittings of auto cannons that makes that fun, rather than, uh, imagine, rather than having more hard points. Imagine flying a fit where you care about your damage on a bloody Maldiction. Behave. Killing killing drones is important. Yeah, sometimes. but how fast can you kill them? Like, what what DPS are you putting out? Like, what a hundred, if that, with three auto cannons? Or hundred is just dreaming, man. I think it's like fifty or sixty. It, it is. It, it yeah. is surprisingly high. It is about eighty to hundred. Yeah, which, yeah. If you're shooting warriors, it's significant enough. That hail, you're mitigating. hail, wing not cross. Have you heard of it? No. EM, oh EMP, right. Man, Would you on. fire hail at drones? <laughs> no. EMP or barrage. So easy to you, troll this usually, guy. Usually, barrage. I'm meant to be on here promoting my read. CSM campaign, right? Shall I just start? You like... are, but you kind of all right, and you go on you go on Trash Talk Tuesday to do that as well. But you know that that has a certain level of conversation, all right? So, it's, uh... yeah. <laughs> if you want to promote, actually... if you want to plug yourself, go for it. But if I hear any holes in your in your oh, hold on a minute. So just a quick shout out, just a quick shout out. Blue team has landed on grid. All right, we've got two minutes to go. <laughs> Very nice. Blue team's uh, ready, and if I'm not mistaken. Red team's landed on grid as well. All right. Okay, we're going to be getting going soon, apparently, guys. People obviously uh, want to get this done. So we'll be, we'll be cut into the grid in a sec. So we, can, we can't talk about the ranges yet. In fact, we can. As soon as they warp down, you can talk about them because they have been locked in. Uh, we will bring you the grid shortly, my friends. But let's... Uh, I mean, when they, when they do warp Ooh. in... What have you the seen? guns and that Tempest fleet. No, feel free to call them out. The other team can see them, so feel free. They're dual 425s. They're the smaller size water cannons. What? I'm pretty sure they are. They're the only ones that have dual guns. Yeah, but sure, that right? makes sense. That does kind Do of I need to sense. get on grid? That sounds insane. I mean, for me, that's. I thought this was 800s if you have range projection, just hit anything hard, but does dual he... 45s. You have so much fitting on a TF. I'm wondering what he has fitted that he needs to. Uh, oh, rep. Like... is it. Is it an RRTFI and a Cap Transfer Kronos? Oh, that could be possible. Feel, He's got two yeah. utility highs. Yeah. Would you not? Would you not primary the TFI first with this team? Well, I've seen this. I've seen Zero Talent field this double battleship Tinker, and the TFI has been in it. And the TFI, literally, and no joke, has never been shot. Yeah, and when you have a Kronos, you know? like generally the Marauder is the RR boat, so you shoot that first. So if they've done the reverse, okay. that's pretty cool. You'll forgive me for just one second, guys. I will bring you the grid. And I like to be honest with chat, and I like to tell you what's going on. I locked them all up, and I put them on the wrong side. So I'm just moving them where they should be. Give me just 20 seconds. I'm so sorry. 
So, Shade so sorry. this man. Shade me, throw it, throw it. Give it me hard. Wait, what? All right. Hang on then. So we're going to cut to the grid. I need to bring my chat to the family door. broadcast, Jero. No, it's not. We're flagged for <laughs> inappropriate content, whatever it is. Are we really? Well, oh, hey, that's it's funny. Like the, um, the Zero Talent team has warped in at zero. And the Raven team, of course, warping at 50, like the typical cow diaries that they are. Oh, okay. Big, 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 big calls. I like it. I mean, when have you seen a cow diary warp at zero? Like, come on. Um, when they're hauling and going through high sec? <laughs> Maybe, because it walked to zero to the gate. Just saying. <laughs> Perfect, I love it. And I'm just waiting for my referee to give us a countdown and then we'll get underway. I am sorry about the banner, guys. Suddenly, Initiative Cartel have got an absolutely ginormous name and it's the only team that doesn't quite appear properly, so sorry about that. I Looks do... like both Raven and Raven Navy are cruise fit. And here As comes expected. the countdown. I don't think there's another choice in this setup than cruise. Absolutely. absolutely. I just thought I'd say it anyway. And our final. Final, second and final match of the day. Mm -hmm. I, was, I expect to see this crucify just get deleted. The fact they all warped in a zero does suggest some sort of tinker. Because the, the crucify warped a zero as well, didn't he? Well, there he goes. The shooting the Punisher and the crucify. Oh, Split uh, DPS is the best I, DPS. I, I see it. Those, those cruise missiles hitting the, uh, the crucify. Hello. Who's the remote rep coming from? It's coming from the Chronos. Okay. So it is an RR Chronos. So, so can... maybe it's a cap transfer to your fire instead. So I know there's... Maybe I can see oh, the effect. Oh, right. oh, that... Ch F, F in chat. F for the Jackdaw, Jack guys. Not. F for the Jackdaw. We'll see you next year. I mean, hey, I did call Tempest Fleet kill on that. I don't know what the Jackdaw did there. I don't know his position They burnt there. in. Like, look at this. The Flycatcher has been caught by a TFI as well, and he's just gone. Too what? close to a TFI. Yeah, and I, I don't know what they're away. doing. And, did Flycatcher uh, literally transversal match the TFI there? And this... Raven Navy, oh, hold on to your butts, folks. I think is he turning? He's turning. He is turning. Oh, but wait, the Tempest is still charging at him though. He might get the Tempest to boundary map. That'd there's be pretty there's good. no way Bat boundaries here. There is no if, way. If Bat boundaries, he will leave the planet. Yes, he will. He will. Bat. He is turning. He is turning. So he's good. But wait, but damn it, Raven. Ooh, Navy's Raven. Really close. One, oh, two, four. Raven oh. is out. Raven's out. That's out. Raven's That's out. out. The Raven's out. And Raven Navy is out. And Worm oh. is out. Everyone is out. Everyone's out. That's the boundary across the team. God damn. That well, was a throw question mark? Well, uh... They wanted to save the fits for Arthur, right? That's, well, that, that's, well, that's, that's how it works. That's yeah. that, chat! That's that! Uh, what did you even say? What? Uh, CCP Aurora, want to come on and chat? Just fill the <laughs> void. <laughs> like, what? We're not even two, we weren't even two minutes in. Did Casper what? coach them? Shit. How, what shit how did two that? ravens boundary? What? In what world have I entered when Ooh. ravens are fast enough to Ooh. boundary? That shade. We're screenshotting that shade in chat. We're going to have some that's... of that. Oof. Oh, that's good. That's good. Oof. Um, all right, chat. Uh, yeah. Like, I haven't even found someone to raid yet. I thought we'd be going for a little while. Um... Okay, no, but we can talk about it. What do you think? Do we think that was intentional? Or do we think, oh my god, oh my god, they're ramming us, run away? Uh, it was definitely not intentional. I think they hit, they probably hit orbit at like 123 or something on the beacon, if you even can orbit out that far. But no, I think that was a party I feel like they were trying to bait the Tempest fleet then, they just got too close to themselves. Like they were obviously turning and trying not to boundary, but then they both just slid out. Let's get in, because we're in the open. I, I, yeah, sweet, just pieces. Two, two just, ravens just boundaried. In what world have I entered? I, I was on about a five second delay from what you guys were seeing because I'm just watching the stream. I'm not on grid. So I got to watch what the flycatcher was doing there. He It looked like he was trying to transversal match with the TFI. Like, legitimately. I'm not... I, th <sighs> I feel like he was trying to run back towards his ravens. Like, he's like, oh, yeah, crap, I've been tackled. Crap, save me, save me, save me. And it just, he he was going at the same speed as the, that's probably why the Jackdaw died so quickly, because he's so much slower and was probably almost precisely transversal matching the TFI when he was burning backwards. Yeah, I don't really and know. not just that as well, by the way. He was transversal matching the TFI, and he was also burning directly away from the Kronos. Mm-hmm. But the Kronos so wouldn't have done much, even with it. Null. It's not the... He was close it's... enough to Null, but you could be right. I remember the, I remember 
I remember Kronos having a lot of range, but I'm fairly sure that Bastion gives a projection, and of course they don't have 